All right, Chinka Potoms here. So just a quick video. Going to be a couple of minutes. I'm halfway through a job here that I thought would be easy. Um, it's not so easy working on the um, E46. It's a 2000 uh, BMW 328 here. Um, there's other videos out there on how to get to this point. The plenum is off over here. I've removed the electronics here that control the fuel injectors to get a little better access. Um, I removed my air intake here, obviously. And I'll tell you, on the back side over here, let me zoom in, I'm gonna show you what we're working on. Very frustrating. I've seen people do this when they take off the whole intake manifold, which is right here, is your intake manifold. But I've not seen anybody do this without taking off the intake manifold, and it is a beast unless you do one thing. What I'm after is this little bad boy back here. All right, you see him? That's a um, kind of like a diode for your vacuum system that's back there. So one-way valve keeps the vacuum going into a little vacuum control that's hooked in electronically, and electronics connection is down in there where I took it out. And then that comes around, after the electronic control, it comes over here to your EGR, I believe it is. It's right here, it comes off here goes back and around and both of those the little white and black piece and the piece over here for the EGR okay so back from the EGR over here and hooks up to a control little valve that plugs into electro electrical connection okay my problem was the the hose uh, vacuum hose from the EGR over to this little control valve which this one-way valve was also hooked into at the other end, had cracked, cracked on the EGR end a long time ago over there, and I just fixed it, put a new piece of vacuum hose on, it's worked great. Now it's cracked back here, and I'm getting a val uh, vacuum leak. Um, and then once I went back there digging around, I realized the, the hose, let me show y'all, the vacuum hose, okay, that was hooked into this control valve, which is a passive control valve, was also old and broken. So here's the problem. The, the small control valve on the back, I can't even get it out to show you. That's how hard it is to get to this thing. Um, the, it connects in from the driver's side. You just can't get your hands back there to get this thing off. And if it breaks, this one was broken off on there, um, it's, it's almost impossible. I mess with this thing for hours, so I'm hoping to save y'all some time. Like I said, it's not a great video on how to take everything apart and get to this point, but if you're back there working on that, if you take the plenum off, it gives you more room. If you take the electronic controls right here for your um, fuel injectors and pull it over to the side, it gives you a little bit more room. But what you finally have to do, there's just no way around it that I can see, and there's nothing in the books about this, um, you got to disconnect your heater hoses. Here they are right here. Um, you don't have to drain your complete uh, coolant system like the books will say. Just put a rag up underneath there. You're going to lose a little bit of coolant, not a whole lot, um, and then pull them up so they're above your coolant level that's over here in your reservoir. Okay? Or your overflow tank, I'm sorry. That's right here because one hose hooks into the bottom, one hose hooks into it, a control that's right there. Okay, so once you do that, once you take those off, you now have easy access, I'll show you, to these little guys on the back. And you can see how beat up that fella is just trying to get to him. There's two of these that hold the bracket for that control valve back there. Get the bracket undone, you don't have to take it all the way out, but once the bracket is undone, you can scoot it out far enough and pull it over far enough to push your connector to the EGR into the end. So that's the key to getting these things off. Once you get these um, heater hoses off, you now can get back there with your ratchet, okay? And you can get these two little guys off. It's impossible to show y'all what we're looking at back there. I can't get the camera around. That's why, so, why nobody's done this before. Um, I've seen lots of people, like I said, do it when they take off the um, 
the intake manifold, if they're working on their intake manifold and they take the whole thing off and they go back in there and they do a little finagling and rearranging. I've also seen people talk about um, replacing the vacuum hose that comes from your EGR. But the thing about that is that EGR hooks in straight to the back. So you, got, you can get your hands in there and you can push, okay? But take this uh, cover for your motor off. That really helps you get some room. And obviously the, um, the cabin filter and all that is off. The engine covers are off. Um, the plenum over here um, is off, okay? Those kind of the major things and the, the air box too. Oh, another piece I took off that, there's a plastic piece that's right here. It covers this part right here. Go ahead and lift that out. That just gives you more room to get your hands in the side and be working on everything. Okay, so, like I said, probably gonna get some uh, bad feedback, I don't know, on not having a whole thing on how you take it all apart. That's not what this is about. It's about trying to replace those silly vacuum hoses back there that I've worked on for hours and finally realized you can't do it unless you take off the heater hoses. Because you gotta be able to get the, um, gotta be able to get the brace back there off enough to be able to push on your hoses. All right, one little um, trick. Here's the brace. Looks really hard to see back there. I'm not taking it all the way off. Um, once you loosen it from the fuel lines that are coming down, which is pretty easy, there is a zip tie right here that's got some of your electrical connections, one of them being the connection that comes over to your control for your fuel injection. Um, and you just clip that little zip tie and then you can take the whole brace. This is this edge of the brace out. All I, I wasn't replacing the, um, the sensor or the, the control, the, the vacuum control in there. So all I need to do is get this loose enough to pull it out the back and hook my hoses in. And now I'm just gonna resecure it. Alrighty. Okay, and then you just put it back down and then you're done. A lot of work for two stupid little hoses, but better than taking off um, the complete intake manifold. Okay, guys, uh, and girls, I guess. So, uh, Dr. Chinkapotamus, I hope this little quick video was helpful because this thing was a pain in the fanny. The next step would be, um, just as an aside, I don't know, you're gonna have to do some more finagling. Once you get it loose, you can get it off. You gotta disconnect fuel lines off of it. Um, but once you have it to this point, if you're replacing the valve completely, it's got a little snap on it. You can't get to that snap until you get the, um, the brace off, all right? So you can probably do it back there, but then once you get the brace off, disconnect the fuel lines from the brace and you should be able to pull the brace out. Um, but there you go. Thank you all for watching.